Ladies and gentlemen, you're now tuned into Chat City with P. Ross. Conversations and interviews are in the queue. Listen or join in. Here she is, P. Ross. Greetings, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in to another show, Chat City with P. Ross. I am your host, P. Ross, and I am excited and delighted to have in the studio with me today, I have gospel sensation Kim Person. And I also have Chef Jay Williams of Smoke and Jerk. All right. So you know this show is going to be mm, mm, good. Thank you, too, for stopping in and uh, chatting with me today, Kim and Chef Jay. Yes, I'm so glad to be here <laughs> hanging out with you today. I'm excited. I am excited. I hope you are, too, uh, J Chef Jay. I, I am. Chef I am. Williams. Yeah, I, I am. I am. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, I want to say how I met Chef Williams. Uh, we were... Uh, well, I'm going to call it my side gig, okay? I was doing my side gig. I was uh, in Sanford, North Carolina, and I was on a food truck uh, okay. servicing people. And I, we were parked next to Smoke and Jerk. And <laughs> Smoke and Jerk was doing some things over there. <laughs> when I say doing some things, I mean their presentation was wonderful, uh, very inviting. And it was smelling good over there. And a common thing that happens between those that own food trucks, they like to trade off food amongst others that are in the area or near them, and they sample each other's food. Well, I had the opportunity to sample Chef, Chef J. Williams' food, and I'm telling you, it was delicious. You get a house applause on that, uh, Chef Williams. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Now, he's known for his passion of creating what he refers to as taste bud addi addictions. He's a North Carolinian, and he has become locally and privately known for his unorthodox creations. He's raised in the, he was raised in the South, and he is making a name for himself by proudly continuing the tradition of smoking meat while celebrating down-home culinary and Caribbean blended specialties. Tell us about smoking meat, Chef Williams. Oh, wait, where do we start? It's so it's so <laughs> much it's so much. It's so complex, the complexities. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh smoking meat. Uh first let's all say down south, you know, they say pork is king, right? Mm -hmm. So I figured, hey, if pork is king, how can we make it better? You know, so I, I kind of gathered the knowledge from a few mentors I've had uh, opportunities to build with, maybe have a conversation with, pick their brains from a few things. Um, Ed Mitchell, Rodney Scott, you know, um, a lot of it came naturally, though. It, it came naturally. I never thought I'd be the guy that was the one smoking meat, so I always liked to stay in the kitchen. And my brother was really the, the grill guy, the smoke guy, and then... Once I figured out how to do it, mm -hmm. <laughs> I kind of, I loved it, fell in love with it, and just became a double threat on both ends. Okay, so now what age did you begin cooking? Let's ask you that question. I was young. Like, <laughs> I, I, I was young. So like seven, eight-ish. Yep. Uh -huh. Seven, eight-ish. Okay, and how did you start that? I mean, was you, wa was you watching mom or dad in the kitchen or... Okay, so I, you know, we, you know, we from the south, and you mm -hmm. know, good eating is tradition. You, you have to eat good. So I grew up in a house of women that could really, really cook well. Shout out to my aunts because they taught me everything I know. Mm -hmm. um, my aunts really was they, they they put that backbone in me in terms of being in the kitchen. Um, we started out real slight. I tell the story over and over again. We started out real slight with just breakfast food. We did a lot of breakfast, slight stuff like grits, eggs, and then from there, mm -hmm. it became. Uh, chicken cordon bleu, rasta pasta, um, <laughs> and other many, many, many more unorthodox dishes, as well as your your traditional dishes too. But I like to always put a little spice on it. Anything I do. Uh huh. So, at what time did you decide? Okay, I'm, I'm I want to move away from traditional and upgrade my dishes. <sighs> you know, that's that, that's a hard question to answer because I've always. I've always had like real funky taste buds and you know, I, I would pair some things together mm -hmm. that you wouldn't think belong together and then when you try it, you like, Man, where you get this from? Where you figure it out? <laughs> and after I'd done it a few times, I figured I was working with something and 
I really wanted to hone in on that craft of par- of pairing things together that's typically does not um, mix together well. Uh-huh. And, and and that's that's how we got into the unorthodox way of it. Okay. Now, who was it that told you, man, your food is good. You need to do something else with this. Everybody. Everybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So did you decide, okay, I'm going to get a little education behind um this craft I have and and see what I can do to upgrade you know you know my 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 background you know my past life had a lot to do with it as well it's kind of like having that skill and not doing nothing with it because you have other opportunities there for you but you're not really satisfied with those other opportunities that are there mm-hmm. and then just like something clicks and you're like you know what I got a talent I can use and, 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 and do this I was actually an ele- electrician before I started doing um, this whole food thing. I would bring food to the job just to share with some of the fellas, and they would actually call me the cooking electrician. But really, only <laughs> partial of that statement was true because I I could definitely cook, but I was a terrible electrician. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how would you describe your overall cooking philosophy, Chef William? Oh, oh, I I I really don't know how to explain it. I just say it's. It's this delicious unorthodoxness, if okay. that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your signature dish? Our signature dish, I would have to say it's our rasta nachos. That's our signature dish. We're known for a lot of things, but mm-hmm. our rasta nachos is definitely a signature dish, and it's truly, truly unorthodox. <laughs> okay, tell us how you... Um, how your name began circulating in the city of Chef J. Williams. Oh, thank you for asking that. Um, I'm a community type of guy. Uh-huh. I believe in giving back and taking care of people and looking out for the ones that's been forgotten about or the ones that people don't really pay much attention to. Uh-huh. And then when COVID hit, I knew how the schools would be affected. I told my wife, I said, listen, what about the children? Because a lot of the children get their food from school you know i don't know all these children's circumstances but i'm pretty sure it's a lot of children that have issues going on at home whether parents are there parents may be on drugs parents may be going through hardships it's none of my business but if i can bring some relief to it then i want to be a part of it so i started something uh, just off the cuff, just real quick, called Food Truckers for Kids. Mm-hmm. And I reached out to a few of my food trucker friends. was like, hey, I got this idea. This is how we're going to do it. I said, I'm going to get you, 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 you. We're going to team up. We're going to reach out for donations. We're going to have people. We're going to team up with a nonprofit. We're going to have people drop off donations there. We didn't, it really wasn't a money thing. We, we, we never really asked for money mm-hmm. because we were donating all of our time and our resources. And if we can get... Uh, one, two, and three to bring us some pasta, some meat, and some bread. Mm-hmm. Uh, the chefs I know we can we can make we can make some miracles happen with that, and um, we we caught a really 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 big buzz when we started that. We fed over three thousand children collectively wow. with night there elementary for free um, with food truckers for kids. Yes, three thousand people. Fantastic. Thank you. Now, when we first met. I believe it was your family that was with you. I think your wife and kids that was assisting you yes, at ma'am. that event. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So who who does the cooking at home? It seems like all of you chip in to do uh, your food service truck, but does just one of you uh, focus on cooking at home, or do you share? I gotta ask this carefully. Okay. <laughs> 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 nah. Um, <laughs> I used to do. A lot of cooking, a lot of cooking. And then my wife said, since you got the food truck, you don't cook for us no more. <laughs> but still, I still do majority of the cooking at home. My wife, she she's a busy lady too, but she slides in when she can. But for the most part, I do the most cooking, but she can cook too. Okay, awesome. And shout out to your wife. That's right, shout out Hello. to her. <laughs> <laughs> and kids. Um, Chef Williams, yes, ma'am. Um, why? Caribbean dishes. I mean, did you go off to the Caribbean and I have I have some family. Try some something there. Or? We we we, okay. we have some family scattered out, mm-hmm. and um, I like spice. I like to play with different spices. See what I can come up with. You know, most people come to the truck and they're like, "Man, I don't like jerk." I'm like, <laughs> I understand. I get it. But have you tried mine? 
And we don't have a traditional jerk. We we make a sweet barbecue jerk glaze. Mm -hmm. So it's very reminiscent of a barbecue sauce with a lot of Caribbean aromatics mixed in there. So and it's sweet. You you can people that's never had it would be able to relate to it instantly because they get a real um it's real reminiscent of a barbecue sauce. I was trying to describe that sauce to someone <laughs> today before coming up here. I was like, man, it was something he put over that shredded chicken dish, whatever I had. I don't remember what it is. I was like, it was something in that sauce that was just wonderful. And I mean, if you got any outside and want to bring some in, no, I'll just wait. We're going to get you some, though. Yeah. We're going to get you some. Okay. All right. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Chat City with P. Ross. I am your host, P. Ross, and I am proud to say I have in the office with me today gospel sensation Kim Person and Chef Jay Williams of Smoke and Jerk. All right. Now, Chef Williams, back to you again. Um, what three tools can you not go without when you're in your kitchen? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> like, oh man what three tools can i not go without definitely knives definitely mm -hmm. have to have good knives definitely have to have a cutting board mm -hmm. and <sighs> does water count because we definitely have to clean some things <laughs> <laughs> yes said, hey, water can be a tool you know but definitely <laughs> definitely knives we'll definitely make it cutting a tool. Board. <laughs> <laughs> so the knife tool i meant knife Cutting board. Cutting board and water. All right. Now, during the pandemic, a lot of food truck owners were being snubbed by restaurant owners and the general public for taking away business businesses from restaurants uh, and storefronts, you know? So um, mm -hmm. how, did this affect, how did this affect you? COVID was a blessing to me, um, for real. I, I hate how it destroyed, you know, um, some businesses for people. But for me and mine, it was actually a blessing, I guess, because when COVID hit, I was a blessing to people. So COVID became a blessing for me. It allowed me to put myself in the forefront of it. It allowed me to help others. Um, but also a lot of food, a lot of those guys that was complaining, they found themselves buying a food truck out here in these streets right. too, doing the same thing. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. Um fast food industry will we is it fair to say that the food truck business is similar to fast food not at all not at all okay. fast food and food truck food are completely two different things and the, the funny thing about it is people come to food trucks with the expectation or the expectation of it being um fast food well it's gonna take us a minute this this is not your average chain. It's going to take us a minute. Everything's made fresh on my truck. We make everything fresh. Everything's made to order. Um, so there's no way. And you're going to have wait times. You're definitely going to have wait times. And that's a big conversation in the food truck community. So I'm glad you asked that and I got an opportunity to really put that out there. Food truck food is not fast food. It's just good food. Okay. Let's talk about customer service. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and customer service seemed to have gone down in the amount of the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, I understand during the pandemic, there was a lot of shortages uh, as far as uh, employment. And, you know, you, you would leave room for um, a dip in customer service. However, what do we need to do to bring it back up? I believe it all starts in training and the type of person that you hire because – at my truck, customer service is number one. Not only do we care about the food that we give you, we care about your experience. And I believe sometimes your experience can matter more than your food does because you could be having a total off day, right? Mm -hmm. You can come to my truck, come shop with me, and have a t and, I, and I have a, a total off day where everything is just off. But the one thing that's going to bring you back is not that off food. It was that great customer service. Mm -hmm. That's what gets people back to you. And I think a lot of people have forgotten that. But to bring it up, I would say it's just like I, I have conversations with my staff on the regular about customer service. You can fuss and cuss when the window close. But right now, we want to make sure that these people know that they're appreciated because without them, we're nothing. We don't make no money. They don't come. When you're looking for employees, what characteristics are you looking for? So for me, that question hits a little different for me because I specifically like to hire felons. I specifically like to hire um, people that's kind of fell to the side and trying to get their life on track. So I deal with a lot 
-hmm. but I want to help people. But um, so that question is different for me. But still, they still I look for cleanliness. I look for punctuality. I look for the, my biggest thing mm -hmm. is dependability. I want to be able to depend on you. That's the biggest thing. Awesome. Now uh, you mentioned felons. Uh, mm -hmm. when you and I met, you shared with me your story and I was going to bring this up later in the show, but since you're talking about it now, I'll go ahead and discuss it now. Okay. Um, we looked at Martha Stewart, who is an American retail businesswoman, also known for her great cooking skills. Um, she ran into some controversy when she was, um, when she was jailed for, um, some type of fraud dealing with uh, stock trading. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was able to bounce back when some felt like she would not be able to. Mm -hmm. You shared with me a little bit about your story um, and your past. Do you care to share about any of that today? Sure. Similar to sure. Martha Stewart. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Um, my story is I was that kid. I um, was a trouble kid, a little dirt kicker. And... Um, I had to learn a lot of things the hard way. Um, fortunately for me, I was able to bounce back. But I had uh, my mom was a single mom doing the best she could, with two boys, and um, she was in the church. And I was just determined to do my own thing. I was just determined that I wanted to be out here in, the, in these streets, mm -hmm. wanted to be outside when I didn't have to be. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So um, it cost me. And unfortunately, it cost me a lot. It cost me six years of my life in prison. And it was, when I when I came home, it was either, hey, look, we're gonna continue this cycle, or we're gonna come home, we're gonna bounce back, be an example, and put some people on, we're gonna be an example, and try to deter people from going down the path that I went down, we're gonna put some people on, and show them that, hey, look, you can be something, we're gonna put some people on, and show you how not to go behind those bars. I'm gonna house applaud you on that, sir. Good inspirational story. And, and one for someone to follow. Um, for someone that just heard that and may just be coming out of the prison system, what steps, what essential steps would you pass along to them? Like step one, two, three, okay. to turn everything around. First, you got to want it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't get out here and say, oh, I'm going I'm, I'm to do it because I got kids. No, I understand that concept, but the first thing is to say you're gonna do it for you. You gotta want it. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. Two, like, like, like I don't want to get all biblical on you, but I read a scripture that said, "Write your vision and make it plain." So uh -huh. you gotta make goals. You gotta set goals. I drew out my goals. And every now and then, I'll repost it on Instagram. I drew out. I had to give you a house call. Write your vision, make it plain. Yes. Thank you, thank you. I drew out the food truck, and it, I'm not an artist at all. I'm a food artist. I drew out the food truck, and it was just a box, and whatever I thought it was supposed to look like is what I drew on that paper. And I looked at it, and I started writing down the things that need to be done, and we got it accomplished. So do, know that you want to do it for yourself. Write your goals out. And the third thing, hey, is knock them down. Awesome. All right. If you're tuning in, you're listening to Chat City with P. Ross. I'm your host, P. Ross, and I'm grateful to have in the studio with me today Billboard charting award nominating Kim Person, gospel singer, and Chef Jay Williams of The Smoking Jerk. Uh, you just heard Chef Jay Williams, and now we're going to turn to Miss Kim Person. Kim, thank you again for taking time out of your very busy, busy mm, excuse me, very busy schedule to be here with us today. Oh, I am so honored to be here. Absolutely honored to be here. All right. And Kim, I don't know if you knew this, but in 2010, I moved into I moved to Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I was church hunting and uh, I stepped into a church. I don't remember the name because it was just that long ago. Actually, it was 2011. <laughs> and I recognized a few familiar faces in this Raleigh church, uh, some from my hometown, one being your husband. And uh, on stage was you. Oh, wow. You were singing with the praise team or choir. I can't remember which one. And your voice was just stunning to me. Oh. Um, it was a great Kim person experience, first time experience live for me. So I just want to say thank you for that. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And I've kind of followed your career from there. Um, Kim, let's see. The next time I saw you, and I think where we actually were able to meet, 
was at my cousin's wedding in little Aberdeen, North Carolina, Jackson Hamlet community at Down Memory Lane venue. Wow. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> if you don't, then okay. I, I kind of sort of do. I haven't but, been to a lot of weddings in that area, but I do uh-huh. remember highlighting a few of them. Okay. That was a reception. I think it was, yeah, it was the reception part of the wedding. But that's when I first actually officially met you. And I was like, wow, you know, what? It, it was just such an honor to meet you at that particular time. You have reached such phenomenal achievements in the music industry and in the area of gospel. At what age did you discover your talent? Hmm, Good question. Um, And I always say this, um, I've actually been singing since the tender age of two. Mm -hmm. My grandparents used to put me on a cement block and let me sing. And people used to come from all around the region of of, um, Lumberton, North Carolina and surrounding areas to see the little girl with the big voice. And so, I think that was when we discovered it back when I was around two years old, when we made that discovery of music was something that I was going to be blessed to do for the rest of my life. Awesome. Now, uh, I believe there were singing contests that were held in your area. Is that correct? Right? Yes. Of uh, Lumberton, North Carolina? Yes. Actually, this one is a particular highlight of mine. I was in high school, and they had a fair, the Robinson County um, State Fair, uh-huh. Robinson County Fair, and they had a talent show. And um, I went to the talent show, and while I was up there singing, my favorite song at the time was Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And as I was singing the song, a cast came over the sta- the, the entire fair, and the lights went out wow. uh, but I kept on singing I got to that really high note why can't I and I was holding it and the lights went out and all of a sudden it's like in in a moment it's like I realized don't stop don't stop <laughs> keep singing and at the t- towards the right at the end the lights came back on and I got a, a round of applause and just a standing ovation for that moment and of course I won the um the show all right now hey that's what I'm talking about Now, who told you you are recording artist material? Who told me I was recording artist material? Wow, that's a very good question. And I would actually have to say that it was a fellow... um, um, musician uh-huh. Dietrich Hatton. Oh, wow. He came to my local church for uh-huh. an event, uh-huh. and everybody, you know, when you have people come to town, they'd be like, "Make sure you hear this person sing. Uh-huh. This person sing. This this girl, she bad. She's she's singing my church. This, that, and the third." Uh-huh. And so Dietrich said, "Okay." I'm going to test this girl out. I'm going to bring her up on the stage. And sure enough, he brought me on the stage and everybody say that I wowed them. Uh And then Dietrich said, it's time for you to step out of your normal situation here in your local church. And it's time for you to see yourself outside of just being a choir member, a praise and worship team, step out and see what got, what, you know, what will happen next in your life. Fantastic. Wow. Okay. Now let me ask you this. How did you feel at that moment? with Diedrich had had and giving you that advice. First of all, I was starstruck because I I love myself some Dietrich Hatton. Who first off, who doesn't love Dietrich? Right. You know, and um, I was a little nervous at first mm-hmm. because um, I was a new wife, um, mm-hmm. and I was trying to work on being a new wife and and, and enjoy those things. So mm-hmm. I wasn't really interested. I was interested and wasn't interested. But then you know, through consultation and talking with my husband, he was like, "Bae, it's time for you to just step out and try something new." Mm-hmm. And in the moment that I got behind that, gotten that student got behind that microphone I believe we began to make magic okay what steps did you take what uh, to pursue um, the initial um, recording mm-hmm. artistry Finding the right producer is always key when Uh you're doing any kind of music. Uh So I launched launched out and found the right producer to get me started. Finding the right studio, finding the right music that's going to match with my voice. Mm -hmm. And um, those were some of the steps that I took. And of course, um, all that is no good if you don't have a good song. Mm -hmm. And so my husband wrote my very first song, which is entitled You Are My Everything, back in 1999. I'll never forget it. That was my start. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Now, you've recorded five albums, no, four early in your career, and Mm -hmm. your fifth project was um, The Journey. Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So you've recorded You Are My Everything, Sincerely Yours, Speak Life, Mm -hmm. and Just Believe. Mm -hmm. Tell us what were the basis behind those titles. 
um, the basics of those titles are was my feeling. Mm -hmm. And I believe that people we get all kinds of feelings but based on my feelings and how i titled them was based on what got what was going on in my life as it relates to what the message i wanted to give to people the journey is all about life is all about a journey but it's also all about what you make it mm -hmm. and just believe that's pretty much what it is it's just a sound of believe just believe for anything that you desire any of your goals your dreams your visions have a belief for your family and so the songs that i sing and the titles that i give kind of are all like inspirations and there's something that inspire people to keep believing and keep moving and just doing what they believe they're called to do. Fantastic. Now, wh which of these were your favorite? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it would have to be my first one because um, my um, project, You Are My Everything, my husband wrote that song and it was me coming straight out the gate and just remembering all the excitement and the anticipation of the release of that project is it's, it's still one of the ones that sticks out in my head how I was able to sell out um, a whole entire um, civic center and back in my hometown and just some of the, the, the milestones that I was able to accomplish then mm -hmm. they always stand out in my mind and make the accomplishments that I have now from my projects now it just makes it magnifies it even the more that I knew how that felt back in the beginning and seeing where I am now, it just lets me, some total lets me know that I'm doing the right thing. Okay, awesome. Now, which of these projects was the hardest for you? Um, so we have The Journey and we have Journey 2.0. The Journey was oh, okay. my project yeah. that we released back in, um, in 2020 uh -huh. and we came in number two behind Kanye West when he decided he wanted to come out with a gospel album. Oh, wow. And then The Journey 2.0 <laughs> uh -huh. is my current project that you know alludes to me um, having other accolades that I'm sure we'll talk about in a few minutes. But I think The Journey was my hardest because I was going through some challenges in my life and I wanted to give up and I didn't really see myself as I see myself self now mm -hmm. so the the fact of beginning again that was the process of why the journey was so hard and why I know that I had to label it the journey because it was so difficult it was so hard for me to to see myself the way I needed to see myself and so it was the hardest because I had to will myself will myself to record it I knew I had something powerful to say mm -hmm. but I had to will myself in order to do that now um each of your albums have how many songs? I mean, just roughly on each one. Um, the least they have is four. The mm -hmm. most they have is eight. Okay. What kind of time completion uh, does that, t I mean, do you do that in a month, a year? Uh, what's the time frame on that? We put a, normally do a timeline on it anywhere between six months to eight months. It just depends on uh, what's happening with me because um, last year I wasn't even thinking about releasing a project, but I clearly had a, heard a nudge and heard the heard the voice of the Lord say, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and so in June I recorded um, – my single wonderful and we released the full project in October. And then out of all of that, we end up getting three Stella nods and we end up with the number one song. So I believe that it's based on you hearing them. <laughs> Thank you. I had to give you that. <laughs> yes. I believe it's based on hearing the voice of God and the direction and just, just knowing that you got to just push in. And I think when I heard his voice clearly, the, the the I guess the proof is in the pudding when you see the results of what have happened as a result of that. All right. We are going to give our audience a treat today. We're going to play a couple of Kim's songs. The first one we're going to play to you today is called Through It All. Tell us a little bit about that song, Kim, before we play it today. Yes, Through It All um, is actually a very personal song um, to me because my husband and I were not able to have kids, but we end up having um, kids because raising two of my cousins that we're raising as our children. And this song, Through It All, came to me at the right time because it talks about how I was able to go through, how I was able to endure, and at the end of the song, you will understand that it was through it all that God gave me my hopes and my dreams and he can do the same thing for you all right ladies and gentlemen we present to you through it all Reminiscing about how far I've come, I've been through the hurt, 
Powerful vocals, beautiful song. Thank you. Thank you so yes, much. Yes. <laughs> what do you got to say about that, Chef Williams? <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Now, I was sitting here with you, right? And I was listening to you talk. And like, first thing first, I was like, I was listening to it. And I was like, she's giving a well polished interview. So I'm sitting here thinking, like, I got to be polished when she's spinning back to me. So I heard that this is. Is this new or is this an old project? Uh, this this is off of well, it was released in 2020. So that sounds amazing. Yes, it does. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it does. That sounds amazing. Thank you. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Chat City with P. Ross. I am your host, P. Ross, and I am delighted to say I have in the studio with me today the very talented Miss Kim Person, Mrs. Kim Person, and Chef Jay Williams of Smoke and Jerk here in Raleigh. All right. Now, if you have any questions for any of our guests today, this will be a good time to call. You can call us at 919-899-9305. 
Again, that number is 919-899-9305. Miss, Mrs. Person. Yes. Um, have you had any formal training in, in your singing? Um, I've participated in choirs and small groups, and I've actually been a music director and teaching of vocal vocal um, acrobats and, and vocal parts, but I haven't had any what you call formal training, but I've always been around people who were very skilled, and I learned from them as I honed in on my craft. Awesome. Awesome. Now, do you play any instruments? Does the tambourine count? <laughs> Listen, t- if the tambourine yeah, that'll counts, work. That'll work. I play a mean tambourine. I actually okay. had a whole um, solo back in my days at North Carolina Central, Eagle uh-huh. Pride. Hey, Eagle Pride. in the okay. gospel choir, they gave me my own little solo to play the tambourine. So I guess that makes me... Uh, uh, a tam- uh, what, a professional tambourine room, room, tambourine, tambourine player. player. Yeah. All right. Is it thigh or hand? I just gotta know. Is, is it thigh oh, or oh, is it, it hand? It's the hand. You, <laughs> got, you gotta pat your feet and you got yeah, that's that beat. Once you get that, you about to go somewhere. That shows I'm a country girl right yeah. there. <laughs> it's all right. It's all good. Now I was surprised to hear uh, your husband writing songs for you. Uh, how about yourself? Do you write any of your music? Yes, I actually write a good portion of my music. Okay. And um, as a matter of fact, the one of my songs that went number one, I actually did a remake of it, but I wrote a good portion of it. So I write about 80% of my songs, and then whatever producer that I'm working with, I give them a chance to kind of hone in and kind of give me a different perspective of what they feel and how they feel. And so it, it's usually a good marriage. Okay. Um, yes. All right, now... So do you give them um, highlights or instructions about how you want, like you write the lyrics, but how do you communicate to them what you want the music to sound like? That is so crazy, right? So I'm in the process of writing a new song. Uh-huh. And so I've already confirmed what producer I want to work with. And so it normally starts with me sitting in my Zen room, which is like the man cave for the men. Uh-huh. I have a Zen room for the women. Okay. So I'm usually <laughs> sitting in there, minding my business, and then all of a sudden a sweet melody comes to me. So I just record it right quickly on voice memo. I'll get so excited. I'm like, oh my God, I got a new song, I got a new song. <laughs> and then I'll send it to my producer and I'll be like, okay, I'm thinking with this vibe, I want a little country country western version of gospel or, or whatever so we kind of like talk through the process until we get what fits uh-huh okay now what would you say is your greatest strength as an artist Ooh, my greatest strength is my work ethic Okay. Because you can always find the most talented. I mean, there's singers. I mean, you can walk out of this 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 office right now. There's singers everywhere. Uh-huh. But what sets them apart? For me, um, all of the success that I've been able to get, it's been because of a work ethic. Uh-huh. It's like I believe in researching. I believe in working to get it done. I don't really. I don't believe in tr- giving it to somebody else to do for me. Uh-huh. I want to do it myself. And if I hire somebody, I'm gonna work just as hard as you do to make it happen. So I would think it would be my work ethic. Okay, and I must say, your team of people, it, just the one person I've dealt with in trying to book you for this show, uh, very professional. I mean, every day he was sending emails mm-hmm. almost, um, letting us know where you were and what you're doing and keeping us abreast of how things are going for you in the music industry. Uh, Patrick Noble Allen, I want to give him yes. a nice house of Paul Yes, I'll go along I with mean, that. <laughs> He you is know. amazing. He, uh-huh. We've been together for about 10 to 11 months, and he actually has been such a great um, uh, uh, instrumental piece in regards to all the success that's been happening for me and my music the last couple of years. Definitely magnificent. And your wardrobe, your hairstyle, <laughs> your makeup, on point, sharp, to the teeth. You're fashionable. You're always stunning before the camera. Tell us about your that team that you have right there for you on that. Well, trust me, it's all a work in progress, <laughs> but I hope that I give them a good old masterpiece that they can work with. Um, yeah, uh, and most of it is just con- connect- connecting with the right folks. Um, I wanted to just give a shout out to my um, my makeup um, artist designer, which is Charity Dunn, to my um, wardrobeist, which is Albert Montres, and to my hair person, he, it is... Um, uh, Miko Styles. So yeah, I'm just very thankful for my team that you know they look at me and they trust my instinct and I trust them. So the most important thing with any of that is to trust each other. Yeah. 
Well, you all blend well together. Um, any other genres of music for you, Kim, that um, you like or prefer to do later on? Well, you know, in gospel music, gospel music can be country. Mm -hmm. It could be um, southern gospel. It could be rap. It could be all kinds, contemporary pop. And so I just want to do whatever feels good to me because I know if it feel good, feels good to me, I'll be able to deliver it. And people will get an understanding and they will feel it because I'm the type of singer, I love people to feel what I'm singing mm -hmm. and what I'm saying. And if they don't, I'm going to go a little bit harder because like, y'all don't feel me. Y'all don't feel me. Then I'm like, okay, then I go rapping. You don't feel me. You, you don't feel me. <laughs> so... All right. Now, Patrick Allen Noble, who we mentioned earlier, um, he kept us informed on, or he was telling us how you were doing on your hit, Wonderful. Yes. And I was following that closely, rooting for you. And he was telling us, he was keeping us informed on how it was taking off on uh, Billboard. And then you hit yes. number one, the number one spot of gospel play, airplay. Yes. I was like, yes, yes, Kim, <laughs> yes, yes. So that piece has like that country feel to it a little bit, and I love it. Uh, tell us about how you wrote that song and how you came about uh, finishing Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes, like I, I mentioned earlier, I was sitting in my Zen room. That's right. My grandmother used to sing a version of that song because it's a song that was very, very popular back in the 80s and 90s uh -huh. by choirs. And so my grandmother used to sing it during testimony service. Okay. And I was sitting in my Zen room and I was just thinking about her and then the words just started coming to me. So many wonderful things about Jesus. And I was like, okay, all right. And then I was like, wait, wait, wait. I think I got something. I called my producer and he said, sure enough, Kim, you write a verse to it, put a hook to it, and we'll have something. So that's kind of like how the song came about. Uh -huh. And then I told him, I said, I wanted a, a throw off beat to something like an Erica Campbell or something like a Kiara Sheard or uh -huh. something, but then fuse all that together and give me Kim. And that's exactly what the producer, which is named Philip Bryant, um, did for me with this song. All right. And we're going to have a chance to listen to that now. Kim's number one Billboard hit, oh. Wonderful.
All right, Chef J. I need your review on that one. I was smoking. That was fire. I was too. jacking. I was smoking. Yeah, we I was jacking. We dazzled. We dazzled. That's, that. You know what? Yeah, have, have anyone ever compared you? Like, I, I, I kind of hear like some Kiara in there a little bit. Like, I hear a little bit of that. Oh, I take it. I'm a preacher kid, so I'm up on that gospel okay, too. Okay, I know. Okay, I take it. Listen, I take it all. I got a little Kiara in there. Might have a little Karen in there. Sounded great. All the KKKs in there. <laughs> Sounded great. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. You've been on the stage with some gospel greats. You mentioned Dietrich Haddon earlier. What are some of the others that you've been on stage with? Oh boy, um, Doctor T, uh, not Doctor T D J. Pass. Uh, what's T D Jakes? Uh -huh. Donnie McClurkin. See Karen Clark Sheard, Yolanda Adams, Byron Cage. Oh my goodness! And the list goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> and on. Yes. <laughs> well, I do believe in the near future. There are going to be others saying, I shared this stage with Kim Person. Oh. I believe that's coming really, really soon for you. All right. Now, if you weren't singing, what, what else would you be doing? Ooh, what else would I be doing? Um, just like Chef here, he, he loves community stuff and he loves being around people. Um, I actually um, am a event coordinator. I am a project consultant. So I get a chance to do things like um, working in the community. I also get a chance to do, I love putting events together. Mm -hmm. So any chance I get, I'm always putting something together, whether it be for my family or be for my husband and I, or just, you know, hanging out with friends. So they call me the event coordinator. So even though I'm still singing, when I step away from that, I'm still doing something that I love, which is event coordinating and just making people happy with whatever we put together. That's awesome. Now, how is family and friends been? I'm sure they've been supportive, but tell us more about how they have been supporting you. Yes, they have been my rock. They're very instrumental. Um, I couldn't do the radio promotional tours. I couldn't go out and travel, catch flights and be somewhere everywhere. If it wasn't for my support system, they, they hold me up. They encourage me. They keep me inspired. They keep me motivated. They make sure I have everything that I need. My husband is my rock. I can count on him for any and all things. And he always comes through for me. And this is working on almost 30 years of being married. So yeah, it, it, I couldn't do what I do without them. Every one of my family, from my mom, my mother-in-law, from my sisters, my aunts, my cousins, everyone, if it were not for them, I wouldn't be able to be a success mm -hmm. as I am today. And we're going to have to call your family today and your friends. All right. Miss Person, what is next for you? What is next? We got a lot of great things coming up. We're actually about to start working on the new project, which we will release Um probably maybe first quarter, second quarter of next year. And we have several events coming up that we're going to um, um, be participating in. The African American Festival is coming up. We have um, um, another award show called the Avidity Awards. We were nominated in four categories and we will be performing on the main show. And in lieu of me having the number one billboard um song on on billboard we're actually going to be doing a celebration um coming up in october so we have lots of great things coming up and you know if you folks hang out with me you'll be able to share in this wonderful journey that i'm on oh wow that sounds great and exciting chef j williams yes ma'am chef williams yes. what do we have coming up for you next <clears throat> something smoking something smoking <laughs> real, real, real quick uh, uh p ross real quick sure. this this young lady gave such a polished interview listen my wife is my rock <laughs> and, like, let, me, let me go ahead and, let me do this right let me let me do this right my wife is my rock <laughs> I wouldn't be where I am today without her. She's my big support, okay? I, I had to drop that because she was over here outdoing me all kind of ways. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, listen, listen, listen. That is listen, I'm glad there ain't no funny. grill over here because you'll be outdoing me with that cooking. You know what I'm saying? So my wife is my rock. Let me, let me, let me get that out there, okay? Oh, well, what'd you say, P? What'd, what'd you say? What can we expect from you in the near future? Y'all, you, you can expect to catch us on tour with J. Cole real real soon. Um, got some dates in the air. Um, catch us at Snickerville and more things with Brian D. Okay, and you've had uh, some experience with uh, working with a few celebrities as well. Is yes, that correct? correct? Tell yeah. us about that experience. Yes, ma'am, Miss Person. Yes, come on, come on. <laughs> one, of, one of my clients, actually, um, one of my clients that comes in town when he, when he's here, 
is Neil deGrasse Tyson, which I have the pleasure. I had the pleasure of, of being able to uh, be around this gentleman for an entire day before his show. We've done... Um, would you like me to? I, I I can't name drop as many as she has. Oh my goodness! But we can we can definitely name drop. <laughs> Your list is way longer than mine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, I am an entertainment chef. So I pride myself in being able to provide delicious cuisine for some of the favorites that you see on TV and here on 93.5 at the Oak. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we, yeah. we, we feed y'all too. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Ms. Person. Yes. If you had to give any advice to an inspiring artist coming up in this industry, mm -hmm. what would you say to them? Ooh, how much time we got? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I always say is be your authentic self. Mm. I can't be chef over here. Why? Because he's already taken. But I can be the best part of me that God's created me to be because somebody needs your voice. Somebody needs what you have to offer. So just work on being your most authentic self. And then when it's your time and you get that opportunity to shine, shine bright like a diamond, baby, because right that's like what God has called you to do. Amen. And if one wanted to get in touch with you. Is that possible? And how will we do it? Yes, I have a website. It's KimPersonTheArtist.com. And also, um, you could just Google my name, Kim Person, and all the information and the details that you will need in reference to just staying in touch with me is av made available there. I'd love to have you join me, join me on my journey. All right. Sounds great. All right. And Chef Jay Williams. Yes, ma'am. What inspiration would you give to that young man that's on the street twiddling his thumbs or doing the wrong thing? What words would you say to him? What I, what I would say to him is <clears throat> to stay focused and be like, like Miss Person said, be who you're supposed to be. Don't be too concerned about what society says you have to be or who you have to be. Be the best you. And that's what I would tell him. Awesome. And if one wanted to get in touch with you, how could we do that? If you want to get in touch with me, you can always find me on Instagram. I live there. Okay. So, <laughs> at the smoke, the letter N jerk. You can always find me there. Or you can find me on www.thesmoketheletterinjerk.com. Awesome. This has truly been a mm, mm, good show. And I couldn't have, it couldn't have been that way without you two being here. I appreciate you again for taking time out of your busy schedules to come on Chat City with P. Ross. If you have missed some of this show you can watch it in its entirety on 93.5 on facebook or whisk entertainment um and you can tune in next thursday at 5 p.m with tune in app or again on facebook thank you for listening and watching this concludes our show thank you again miss kim person and thank you chef jay williams thank you for having me all right